Oh my, it's week six. <laughs> You're almost finished. Woohoo. All right, let's take a look here and see. Uh, I promise today's video will be short uh, because there's uh, a lot for you to do, but there's not a lot for me to talk about. Um, so I don't want to waste your time when you have a lot to do. So let's take a look. Give it a second. Okay. All right, starting with the module six overview. Um, as you can see, I always agree, disagree with the pacing provided, but let's take a look at it anyway. Um, you'll be, of course, listening to this today um, and doing the reflection for it. There's the portfolio assignment sheet, which we will go over here shortly. Um, you'll be um, selecting your first essay to revise for the portfolio. We'll talk through that. And then a second essay to revise that they have you doing this first essay Tuesday, second essay Wednesday. Um, Thursday, they have you going back over to project number three to finish that up and assemble it all. Um, that's all fine if you want to do that too. Um, notice that Sunday, next Sunday, um, a week from yesterday, is when everything is due at the latest. Um, now, keep in mind that this is the last week of work, last week of the module. Um, so if you have anything late, and as, as, you've, as you know, I take late work up to one week only, unless there is some uh, drastic medical excuse. If that is the case, then we will talk about that uh, via email. But if you have anything due from last week that you haven't yet done, turned in, you can still turn that in if you do it right away. If not, um, keep in mind that there's no late work due, no, no late work accepted after this coming Sunday. Okay, so once we reach Sunday and it gets to 11.59 at night, nothing else is accepted of any kind. Okay, so I highly recommend that you don't wait till the last minute just in case there's technology issues because sometimes that happens, right? Um, or you think you've submitted something and haven't attached the file or uh, you try and attach it and the internet dies or there's a storm or who knows what, right? So don't wait till the very last minute um, because you know, you had, a, you had a grace period of a week. You no longer have that since we're in the last week. Um, once we hit that deadline, um, I wake up um, on, on Monday morning and I tally your grades and submit them. And then, then they're, they're stuck. They are where they are, okay? So keep that all in mind for this coming week. No pressure, right? Uh, the learning resources, I'm not gonna go over too much of that this week. Um, a lot of that's review. They talk about review writing as a process. This might be helpful to you as you put your portfolio together to kind of figure out what am I doing with it. Um, there's some more grammar review. Some of you need that more than others. Don't forget you can also submit things over here um, on the, wherever it is, uh, in, the, um, in the student resources, there is that tutor, online tutor. You can submit things there if you need to get some more grammar assistance. Um, and of course, this APA essay, which we, went over last week. I'm not going to go over that again, but if you need that APA fine tuning, either ask the tutor for that assistance or look it up there at the Purdue app. Okay, so next up, what are the things that are actually due? We just went through that, but here's where you're going to find them in the activities and assessments. Notice there's no discussion for this module, so one last thing to do. Um, here is where you're going to submit your interview. That's everything. And let's pull that up for everything. As a, um, a reminder, the discourse community will be someone you're, you're unfamiliar with. You've already done this, so I'm just kind of reviewing. Um, you're putting together this research question. What questions do you have about the community? Narrowing your focus, synthesizing your research by all the questions. Um, there's still time to ask follow-up questions of your interview if you need to, or to look back at your community to answer questions. Don't forget you can do that to fine tune things. Um, researching it using secondary sources. Um, you'll need at least five for your matrix, five sources that are secondary that are not your observation. That's a primary source. The secondary sources are other sources that other people have written about it. Um, they could be scholarly, they could be non-scholarly, they could be um, history museums, historical societies. You may have um, other things that you have used besides just a book source or an online database. Um, lots of things you can be used there. Um, you will have that 30-minute interview, which you already did, um, that's recorded. So 
um, remember you're getting that consent form, you already turned it, that in for the most part, and then this five to six page essay that's, that is the profile of all this information that you've put together. So that's what we're finishing up here. Um, again, there's a rubric here provided for you so that you can look through this. Hopefully you've already looked through it once so you know what you were, have done. You've, you should have already have a draft. Um, before you turn that draft in, look at this rubric um, and ask yourself, did I do all these things? Um, if you're turning things into the, the online tutor, you may also want to send this rubric to them. That way they know, uh, how is this graded? What am I looking for? Um, that helps them to give you better advice as well. Okay, and again, it is in APA format, including the APA uh, references page at the very end. Make sure that that is located there and that your sources within the text that you're referring to are in APA format. All right now the big thing the second big thing the new big thing is this portfolio that is due and this is where you're going to submit it when you're done of course here's the reflection um let's take a look at the portfolio now this is this is kind of a fun exercise in that you get to look back at the things you've done over the last six weeks and see you know where did things go how did they work in, in the moment you were probably frantically trying to get them all put together and submitted. Now you get to go back and take a look at them and see um, what things you probably missed. Um, so a portfolio, at the end of the semester, you're choosing two of the essays you wrote. Um, you're substantially revising them in whatever way they need. And in an appendix, you're providing samples of process writing that have some relationship to these major papers. Now, that could be uh, brainstorming, it could be rough drafts, it could be um, comments and things that you had conversations with in the, uh, the, the, the chats, the discussion boards, it could be tutor comments, it could be anything that you did that related to the drafting of those portfolios. You're gonna provide those in an appendix. So the appendix is going to say appendix, paper number one, draft, appendix, and, and some people have two appendices, so paper, appendix A or appendix one will be paper number one, appendix two or appendix B will be paper number two, and they will be there. Now, um, some people prefer to write their drafting with a pen or pencil. I'm old school that way. Um, if that's the case, that's fine. You can include pictures, you know, use your, your smartphone, take a picture of whatever it is. That, you know, I've had people turn in pictures of napkins. This is the, my brainstorming on my napkin. Here's a picture of it. This is fine. Um, don't don't make things more difficult than they are. I'm not looking for busy work. I'm looking just to see how did you do this. Um, this has been a long-term assignment, but it actually has taken on new um, new meaning with all of the AI, artificial intelligence stuff lately. So the drafting stuff is becoming even more important because we want to make sure that you actually did do the drafting and not the AI. So um, in the future, I would say you probably will be more likely to see people asking for drafting using an actual pen um, instead of a computer just for that very reason so just saying um, all right so um, the portfolio this part is the part you have to write um, begins with an introduction and that introduction contextualizes your artifact says you know this is what they are this is what they mean this is what you should expect to find and see in my drafts um, these are the, the main errors maybe that I'm seeing, the main things that I, I fixed. This is why I chose these papers, okay? Um, so the evaluation of the papers you submit um, is worth 100 points, all right? Uh, so approximately, the portfolio is approximately 10% of your overall grade for the course. And it is your opportunity to showcase your best work, right? To say, okay, um, I did this work and I was proud of it, but maybe I made some errors. This is a chance for me to go back and correct those errors finish that, polish it up a little bit more, put it all together and say, hey, look, this is what I did. Um, so this portfolio is going to be one Word document. Everything will be considered, will be all in one document. Um, so you'll begin with the introduction and this, these should be labeled, right? So label it, you know, portfolio if you want to, um, have your name and that sort of thing, then introduction, and then, you know, telling me the context. Um, these are the things that you should include in this. Make sure that you do take a look at what are all the things you should be answering in that introduction. Um, and it does ask you what kind of grade you expect from it. After the introduction, again, this should be labeled to revised polished essay that you've chosen. 
So your options are project number one, project number two, or project number three, right? So you're going to choose uh, two of those. And again, they'll be labeled. So you should have a label off to the side, paper number one, project one, project two, whatever it is. Um, and perhaps, you know, these are the revised editions one more time. So I will see new clean copies of those listed. After the polished essays, then there will be an appendix. And, and there might be one appendix or two appendices that contain the pre-writing work that went into those essays. And however you however you put that that single or, or plural appendix or appendices, make sure it's well labeled so I know which rough stuff goes with which essay, right? I should be able to see that fairly clearly. Um, as always, there's a rubric that kind of goes through, did I do these things? Do I have the introduction? Does it address personal progress? Does it, is it well organized? Is it well written with few errors? Is it labeled? Um, has it been significantly and thoughtfully revised? Um, are there high high quality academic writing that fits this course? Um, is there an appendix? Does it have stuff? Okay. Um, writing instructions, you'll be saving your document with last name, assignment, title. So if it were me, it would be Benuski project number four, portfolio, something like that. Um, again, everything should be in APA format and citations and everything else. So this gives you the opportunity to remedy any APA stuff that you weren't quite clear on earlier. Um, and that's when you're going to be turning in. So, right, there's a lot of things to do this week, less of the discussions, more of polishing, finishing up project three and putting together project four, uh, which is reflecting back on what you did. Now, um, let me show you a quick video that kind of talks through um, the reasoning for why we want to do a video. Um, so I'm looking at another sort of portfolio. So now that you've put together a portfolio for this class, you may want to consider putting together a portfolio for yourself. And that portfolio, the portfolio, the purpose of it would be to explain you. Um, a lot of people do portfolios for themselves when they're looking for a job. So I want you to kind of see the connections here and why we do this as something that might be useful to you. So let's take a look at this. Hello and welcome to ePortfolios 101. What, how, and where to get you started. In this video, you'll learn what you need to know to create your first ePortfolio. To begin, let's define what an ePortfolio is. An ePortfolio is simply a personal website where you can highlight academic and professional accomplishments. Whether you're a graphic designer, performer, researcher, or even a community volunteer, you can create a professional website to highlight your professional skills and competencies, as well as showcase your relevant experience with concrete examples. This is accomplished by showing, rather than just telling, what you've done. Your ePortfolio provides you with a space to actively reflect on your projects, work experiences, connections, research, and other learning moments. It also creates a visual context for employers, graduate schools, colleagues, and others with an interest in the work you do. In planning out your ePortfolio, remember this as much of a reflection of you as it is a reflection of your experience for you. While every portfolio may be unique in its presentation and content, they're all composed of two essential pieces, artifacts and reflections. Artifacts are your displayed supporting materials, and they're included to demonstrate the depth of your relevant experiences and competencies. Artifacts can be any number of things from research papers, presentations to videos, pictures, documented projects, transcripts, certificates, and other documents that you may want to share. With each artifact comes written reflection. Reflections will vary in length and appearance and depend on what you want to draw attention to regarding the artifact. Reflections focus on the process of creating the artifact and outcomes and your personal growth from beginning to end of the artifact's creation. However you choose to reflect, remember that your e-portfolio is about you. So grounding your reflection of what you learned along the way is essential. While there is some overlap in terms of what ePortfolios, resumes, 
blogs and LinkedIn profiles can do for you, there are some key features that distinguish ePortfolios. With your ePortfolio, you decide how the content will be organized. Unlike your resume, how you choose to incorporate pictures, themes, colors, and your artifacts to tell your story is entirely up to you. ePortfolios do not have a one or two page limit and they can be shared with as many people or as few people as you'd like. Each visual artifact and reflection you include provides professional evidence-based context for your audience that might otherwise be missed. Most importantly, your ePortfolio's design, purpose, and professional content is up to you and an opportunity to express your creativity. An important note, your ePortfolio does not in any way replace your resume or your LinkedIn profile. Creating and maintaining your ePortfolio would be in addition to the other professional documents and websites you're currently using. However, don't forget to list your ePortfolio URLs on any other hard copy documents you have. To begin creating your ePortfolio, you'll want to select the website building platform that works best for you. While there are several free website building platforms available, we recommend first exploring free options like Wix and Weebly or WordPress and Google Sites. Those are free as well. No free option is strictly better than the other. Some options like Wix and Weebly offer more advanced features with a monthly or annual commitment, but these are not required. Your preference will ultimately depend on the features you're most interested in using to create your ePortfolio. We want to emphasize that all the basic features you would likely need are free. However, some platforms like CarbonMade and Squarespace require a monthly or annual commitment after the free trial. They offer personalized web domains, mobile app capabilities, and other customizable features. Remember, though, before you pay anything, it's best to know your options and what your actual needs will be. Finally, once you decide which platform to choose, don't forget to create a URL link that's easy to remember and share. Okay, so now you kind of have an idea of once you have the skill sets to create a portfolio, what in the world might you actually use them for? Um, so some of you will want to use it in that way, um, connected to your LinkedIn or to turn uh, into someone whom you're applying for a job or just to collect those things all together so that you know um, you're ready should a job opportunity arise at any point or something else happen where you need that sort of information. So always keep track of that stuff someplace uh, safe, right? Um, second note on that one. Um, the internet is a fantastic place. Um, you, you do want to have some backups if it's your computer. Make sure that you are saving those things um, in multiple different places. I highly recommend saving any portfolio stuff uh, in both on the computer, perhaps also in the cloud. And as a third thing, uh, email it to yourself. So always have access to it via email as well. That way, should something happen, you have multiple locations in which you can find your things. All right, uh, I promised you a short one because you have a lot going on this week. So from here on out, I am going to take any questions that may be here. I will be here um, for some time uh, in case people pop in for this particular one. Um, but you, as you listen to this as a recording, are free to go and get things done. And it's been a pleasure. So thank you so much for all the work that you've done this, this quick six weeks. <laughs>